graduate students so welcome to experimental techniques and material characterizations lecture number four i'm dr Purvez emil uh, in this lecture we will continue our discussions on the scanning electron microscopy so this will be like uh, part number four uh, uh, of that series and here on we will have a discussions on a role of magnetic lenses and scanning electron uh, microscope so let's proceed towards uh, today's lecture uh, we will start the lecture from the discussion with the magnetic lenses. Uh, so what is the main purpose or the key purpose of magnetic uh, lenses? So the magnetic lenses, they play a role of uh, focusing. That is uh, the condenser lenses. Uh, uh, their main role is basically the focusing of the electron beam. So now we have the question that why we are uh, having the magnetic lenses instead of the optical lenses. So the reason for the that uh, is that uh, that uh, the optical lenses uh, uh, they basically reflect the electron. Uh, so that's why we cannot utilize it here in uh, SEM. So instead of that, we utilize uh, magnetic lenses uh, because we need only focusing of the electron. We do not want the electron to be reflected. Uh, we we instead want the electron to be focused on a specific uh, point. So uh, the condenser lenses basically, uh, I mean a type of magnetic lenses uh, whose uh, main purpose is uh, focusing. So what it mean by focusing? Uh, focusing mean that it determines the beam current uh, which impinges on uh, the sample. Uh, then uh, uh, we have objective lens. So objective lens is also a type of magnetic lens. And the role of the objective lenses has the, the final probe firing. Uh, I mean, it normally form uh, the final probe of the uh, electron uh, beam. So what it means, uh, or what is the role of the objective lens? The role of the objective lens is to determine uh, the final spot size of the electron beam. Uh, that is uh, the resolution of uh, an SEM uh, micrograph or a sample in SEM micrograph. So uh, we, we can increase or decrease the resolutions. Uh, so that resolution in SEM is basically, uh, I mean, it can be done with the, uh, with the help of the objective lenses uh, in the SEM. Uh, another important thing in the SEM is uh, need for the vacuum. So one may ask the question, why we need a vacuum in SEM? So uh, you know that when an SEM is used, so the electron optical column and sample chamber must always be at a vacuum. And there are certain reasons for that, that why vacuum is necessary in the uh, SEM column. So the first reason is uh, if the column is uh, in a gas filled environment, so electron will be scattered by gas molecule, uh, which will lead to reductions of the beam intensity and uh, stability. So that is the first reason that why we need a vacuum and the second reason is other gas molecules uh, which could come from the sample or the microscope itself could form compounds and condenses on the sample. So uh, this will uh, this would lower the contrast and obscure detail in the image. So these are the two main uh, reason that why vacuum is necessary that why vacuum is needed and the uh, SEM analysis. Now the condenser lenses, uh, I mean for a thermonic gun, the diameter of the first crossover uh, point should be approximately in the range of 20 to uh, 50 micrometers. And if you want to focus the beam to a size of smaller than 10 nanometer on a specimen surface, so the magnification should be uh, around 1 over 5000. So, which is not easily attained uh, with one lens, uh, say uh, the objective lens only. Uh, so, th this is also, I mean, uh, uh, an answer for the question that why we uh, have so many lenses, or we say that why uh, we have the condenser lenses, uh, I mean, uh, mm, uh, instead of objective lenses, why we have other type of uh, condenser lenses. So this is one of the specific reason that why more lenses than the objective lenses that are required uh, and the uh, same. So therefore the condenser lenses are added to magnify, uh, to demagnify the crossover uh, point. 
I mean here we say that only objective lens objective lens is not sufficient here in the SEM and we, we are justifying the reason for the condenser lenses that why condenser lenses are added so the role of the condenser lenses uh, are that uh, they are being uh, utilized to demagnify the crossover uh, point so that's why the uh, the condenser lenses they are added uh, are they are being uh, put in the SEM along with the objective lens in order to demagnify uh, the crossover point. Now here is uh, you can see uh, I mean it's, it's uh, 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 in order to answer the question that how is electron beam focused. I mean uh, uh, here we, we will try to answer the questions that how is electron beam focused and scanning electron microscope. So here you can see we have a magnetic lens and a magnetic lens uh, that is basically in a form of solenoid uh, that is designed to produce a specific magnetic flux uh, distribution. So here you can see that magnetic lens uh, solenoid and inside that solenoid you can see uh, a spiral uh, trajectory of a single electron. So this is a spiral trajectory of a single electron and here on you can see path of electron and the beam. And this is uh, the phi that says the distance of the uh, electrons uh, to the focal length. And uh, Q, uh, you know that by lens formula, which you can uh, easily write, which you can easily understand from here and also from in the elementary school physics, uh, that lens formula is equal to 1 over uh, F, that is focal length is equal to 1 over phi. That is the distance from the object to the focal length, uh, to the center of the focal length. Uh, plus 1 over Q, that is uh, the distance from the, the focal length, a center of the focal length is to, or a center from the focal in the optical center to the uh, image point. Uh, so it's a lens formula, and from this lens formula, uh, we have the demagnification formula uh, that we denote by M, and that is equal to uh, Q over P. Uh, so you know what is mean by Q and uh, P. So here, uh, the crossover, uh, that is the beam diameter, I mean this setup is easily magnified here. So here you can see that this is basically the magnetic, uh, the magnetic lenses uh, which work as a solenoid. And here we have a spherical diaphragm. Uh, so uh, here you can see that uh, we have the formula uh, for the magnetic force uh, which is equal to minus E and to uh, V cross B. And this B here, uh, you can see here that F, we, we, we have the magnetic thing like this, that is the magnetic field. Uh, I mean, uh, if we put the magnetic field along the x axis, so here you can see that this B naught, uh, I mean, that, that, that is here uh, in this formula. So, um, what actually we do here, if you look at, uh, we have the relation that is uh, focal length is proportioned to uh, B naught square. So here this is the B naught square. So uh, how we control the beam, uh, so uh, or how we can control the focal length, so F can be adjusted by changing B naught. I mean, it's, uh, if we want to adjust the focal length, so uh, what actually we do, uh, we just trying to adjust the magnetic field. By adjusting the magnetic field, uh, we can actually adjust uh, the focal length. Uh, and that and other work, uh, it can be done by changing the current uh, through the coil. I mean, uh, what actually we do here, if we want to uh, adjust the focal length, uh, I mean, so we want to change the focal length, and you know that beam it can be controlled with the help of that. Uh, so what actually we do, uh, we actually change the magnetic field, and the change in magnetic field can be easily brought by uh, the current, by changing the current through the uh, coil and here uh, you can see the more uh, I mean easily understandable setup we have these uh, scanning coil uh, that how I mean so we mentioned the function of these scanning coil and also uh, that of the objective lens so the objective lens is uh, machined to a very high precision and the magnetic field pattern is very carefully uh, designed just like you can see it here so, uh, but here you think you should uh, remember that the procedure attainable by machining cannot match the required 
for controlling a beam uh, with a pi equal to 10 nanometer uh, or we can say that uh, for controlling a beam uh, with pi 10 nanometer so uh, for that purpose uh, we use uh, the stack uh, matter so uh, the stack matter uh, i mean it basically consists of uh, two pairs of wall uh, which you can see it here this is basically a, a stack matter and this is the first pole and this is the second pole uh, i mean th these are basically the two pole pieces uh, and they are being arranged in the x and y direction and the purpose for them is uh, they are being added uh, to correct the uh, minor imperfection in the objective lenses i mean there there are chances for some minor imperfection in the uh, objective lenses so for that purpose we have the uh, the stack matters uh, inside the stem uh, and they are being arranged in x and y directions and the role of the stack matters uh, i mean the folds uh, the stack matter folds uh, they are basically uh, being put here in order to control or order to correct the minor imperfections uh, that uh, that that can be inside the uh, objective lenses so the role of stack matter is basically that I mean, with the help of the stigmatic fall, uh, we can easily can correct the minor imperfection in the uh, objective lens. So the objective lens controls. Uh, I mean, the the objective lens controls uh, the final focus of the electron beam uh, by changing the magnetic field uh, strength. I mean, uh, what it mean? It means that uh, what actually we do or how we control the uh, magnetic lenses I mean the magnetic lenses uh, they are being controlled with the help of the electron with the help of uh, changing magnetic field I mean if we change uh, by changing the magnetic field strength uh, we can control uh, the objective lens and with that we can control uh, the final uh, electron uh, beam so that's why uh, we're mentioning here that the objective lens uh, control the final focus of the electron beam uh, and that can be done by changing the uh, magnetic field strength. So the cross over image uh, is finally demagnified uh, to an approximately 10 nanometer beam spot, uh, which carries a beam current of approximately 10 raised to power minus 9 to 10 raised to power minus 12 uh, ampere. So uh, now again we have a question uh, that for I uh, means the uh, how the exact focusing uh, of the beam can be achieved and the uh, SEM. So uh, that we have already mentioned that it can be done by changing the current uh, and the objective lens. Uh, the magnetic field strength changes and therefore uh, the focal length of the objective lens is uh, changing. Uh, so what it mean? It mean that uh, we basically change the current. So by changing the current, we actually changing the magnetic field. And by changing the magnetic field, we are actually changing the focal length of the objective lens. And that is how uh, we can uh, do the focusing of the uh, electron beam. So here you can see, uh, I mean, with respect to the current, uh, you can see the focusing of the electron beam. So if we have too strong current, uh, so we will have out of focus uh, lens. I mean, the lens will be out of focus if we have a, 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 a too strong current. Uh, but if we have uh, optimized current, uh, so we will have the objective lens uh, and that will be in the uh, focus mode. And if we have a two weak current, uh, so uh, what actually we will get, we will get out of focus uh, lens. I mean, so here from, uh, from here, from this slide, you can easily analyze uh, that how you can control, uh, I mean, the, the, the objective lens. Uh, with the help of the current so for the strong currents uh, we have out of focus lens and for the optimized current we have and focus lens uh, and for out of uh, for two weak current we have out of focus uh, uh, lens so the aperture what is the role of the aperture so here you can see uh, i mean we have the aperture of the objective lens uh, so uh, this image basically classified uh, the role of the um, uh, aperture that uh, what what uh, could be the effect of the wide aperture uh, on the 
uh, and the uh, striking specimen that is large beam diameter striking specimen uh, I mean the, here we will trying to specify uh, the role of the aperture and the objective lens uh, and with the, with the help of this photograph we have shown it that if we have wider aperture so what will be at role at the final uh, uh, I mean uh, the final destinations and what if the aperture is narrow uh, so what will be at effect at the loss so since the electron coming from the electron gun uh, from here uh, so uh, it have to spread uh, and kinetic energies and direction of moment so they may not be focused uh, to uh, the sample plane to form uh, a sharp spot so by inserting uh, by inserting an aperture so this is you can see this is the aperture uh, this is the aperture here so uh, we are we are mentioning that the purpose of the aperture so by inserting the aperture uh, the spray electrons are blocked and here you can see that uh, they are being blocked and the remaining narrow beam uh, will come to a narrow uh, desk of least con uh, confusion. So here you can see that if we have a wide, wide aperture, so here you can see for yourself that we will have wide desk of least confusions, and as a result, we will get large beam diameter striking the specimen. And unlike that, if we have a narrow aperture, so here you can easily analyze the difference. And uh, unlike that, you can see here. So. Uh, with narrow aperture, we will get uh, narrow uh, desk of least confusions, and as a result of that, you can see uh, we will have a small beam diameter uh, striking the specimen. So this is the key difference uh, that why we should uh, use a wider uh, aperture and the uh, objective lens, and why we should use a narrow aperture. I mean, you can you can easily you you have easily identified the difference. And the purpose of use uh, wide and narrow aperture uh, in the objective lens. Uh, the scanning coil and resonant patterns. Uh, so let's uh, have something about uh, uh, the scanning coil and the resonant pattern. I mean, we already have discussions on the uh, scanning coil. Uh, so uh, you know that we have two set of the coils uh, that are being used for scanning the electron beam. Uh, across uh, the specimen surface and rest in patterns uh, similar to that uh, on a TV screen and that we have already discussed on the um, previous slide that is uh, the scanning coil they basically uh, their role is to control the electron uh, beam and we already had a discussion on them that how they control the beam so uh, this effectively uh, effectively sample the, the specimen surface point by point over uh, the scan area. I mean, with the help of these uh, scanning coils, we actually control the electron beam. Uh, in other words, uh, with the help of these, we can focus it on the specimen surface. Uh, so with that, we can easily analyze, uh, I mean, the sample that, that has been lying here at this particular point. So here's uh, uh, the electron detector in the sample stage. Uh, you can see it here. It's a sample stage uh, where we basically put the sample for uh, SCM analysis. And here inside the SEM, uh, I mean above uh, the sample stage, uh, we have uh, the objective lens. So you can see it here, this is the objective lens. And uh, the EDS detectors, uh, I mean this is the EDS detector inside the SEM. Uh, this is the scanning, uh, the secondary uh, electron detectors and here we have uh, the backscatter detectors so these all detectors they are being there and uh, you know that for uh, they, they are being utilized for different purposes inside the uh, SCA so that's all we have for this part I uh, hope you enjoy uh, but stay tuned for the next part that will be part number five and lecture number five as well uh, in that lecture we will have a discussions on the electron beam and specimens uh interaction and this uh, SEM. So stay tuned for the next lecture. Till then, bye bye.